if I'm gonna be honest with you guys, the final deletion was wonderful. You know, you know, the, you know, it was good and all, but there was some criticisms and there were some things wrong. Now, I'm not saying the match itself was bad. I thought it was okay for what for what was given to us. It was nice seeing Rebby Hardy playing the piano. It looked it looked cool. I saw the little uh, plane thing. I forgot the name. Overall, it was it was pretty cool seeing the lake of the carnation and the dome and the dome of deletion. You know, you see all these places in the far, like they're in the forest. You know, like it, it and it's just all over the place. You know, you see what's going on around you. It was cool. It was good. The ending was pretty anticlimactic, in my opinion. It was a bit odd. So. Overall, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the final deletion or the ultimate deletion, whatever, whatever the name they're giving it. I believe they're calling it the ultimate deletion. The ultimate deletion. Could this be a turning point in Bray Wyatt's career? Because after the match, Matt Hardy threw Bray Wyatt into the lake of recarnation and and he asked Senor Benjamin to retrieve him and Benjamin said that he couldn't find him so 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 Matt Hardy declared the great war to be over since Bray Wyatt wasn't there So yeah, that's pretty much that. Uh, I actually enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was good. But there were some negatives. Now, I'm not going to say there was too much. The only negative is, is that I wish the match was given more time. That's all I'll say. That I wish the match was given more time. That's all I would ask for. That's all I'm pretty much saying. Ultimately though guys, Monday Night Raw was pretty meh in my opinion. It was a bit meh. We started off the show with, oh, what do you know, Kurt Angle. Start off the show and he mentions that Roman Reigns isn't going to be here because he is suspended. And what do you know, Roman Reigns, Roman Reigns shows up. You see the pattern here when they ever they don't advertise Brock they advertise Brock Lesnar and he doesn't show up and they don't advertise Roman Reigns and he comes you know it's amazing it's amazing how they're trying to to trick us but WWE ain't fooling me. Roman Reigns says he ain't leaving until Brock Lesnar comes. So Kurt Angle then leaves, and then security comes with shield-like vests on. Then, uh, then uh, Roman Reigns then starts beating up on the security guards, and guess who comes out? Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar comes out 
He beats the shit out of Roman Reigns. And what happened? All the fans loved. The fans loved what Brock Lesnar did to Roman Reigns. It's so funny how WWE are trying so hard. They're trying so hard to make us like Roman Reigns. But this ultimately failed. This ultimately failed. At first, I was... At first, at first, when I saw the pictures of Brock Lesnar beating up Roman Reigns, he had handcuffs on, I was thinking, are they seriously having Brock Lesnar beat the shit out of him with handcuffs on? So, but now that I've seen what they what was going on, now it makes a lot of sense. Now it makes a lot of sense. So, ultimately, WWE have failed once again to get the fans to like Roman Reigns. And they will continue and continue and continue and continue to fail with Roman Reigns. Oscar and Alexa Bliss. Oscar wins by countout. Wow. That's a new one. Alexa didn't get pinned. Or, I should say, didn't submit. Surprising. But this ultimately led to Nia Jax coming out and looking to get her hands on Alexa Bliss. Mickey James then comes and saves her. And Alexa escapes. So that's that. Am I am I looking forward to Nia Jax as a baby face? Not really. In my opinion, Nia just feels so natural as a heel. And and I listened to I can't remember who it was, but I listened to somebody and what this guy said about Nia Jax them making her as a baby face and him saying it was a good idea and how he said that you know, like, Nia Jax as a baby face, they could use her, like, in a fashion where, you know, you can be a big girl, you can be, like, you can be a big girl that's overweight, and you can overcome all odds, like, because, so, Nia had this story where, they, they used this story of Nia, you know, saying that, well, they had this story where Nia's like, oh, she's been picked on because she's overweight and all that shit. So, that, so that's why they're thinking of making Nia as a face. So I thought it was a good. So we'll give WWE that for actually using their brains to actually think of a reason why they're going to turn her face. Hopefully, this is the end of Oscar's time on Raw. I really hope so, because I'm sick of it. I'm sick of seeing her still on Monday Night Raw. It's time for Os it's time for them to take Oscar off Raw. She doesn't need to be on Raw anymore. She's challenging for the SmackDown title. And where does she need to be? On SmackDown! Speaking of Twitter, I don't know who this was, but I saw this before I got on the start of my review. Someone showed a photo of when Carmella won that battle royal. Do you remember that battle royal back when, when Bailey was in NXT and Carmella was still in NXT? That battle royal where Eva Marie tossed Oscar over the top rope and, and they showed that Carmella won that battle royal and people are saying that counts as a loss for Oscar in NXT? And people are going around saying, Oh, 
Car oh, Carmella's the first person to beat Oscar, and now pe and then be now people are making a claim that that Carmella is going to beat Oscar again here on the main roster. I don't really count battle royals, you know. I don't count battle royals as a loss. They don't really mean anything. So I don't know why this person thinks Carmella winning that battle royal when technically it was Eva Marie that eliminated Oscar from that battle royal. I don't know why he thought that counted. Go go find that person on Twitter. I can't, I wouldn't remember his name. But then after that. Uh, Braun Strowman had a match with Cesaro. Braun Strowman won. Then the Revival versus Titus Worldwide. And then the Revival have declared themselves in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. So this is how the Revival are going to make their WrestleMania debuts. Being a part of the Memorial Battle Royal, this shows you how much we don't care about the Revival right now. Are the Revival really going to win? Seriously, do, do, does anybody believe that the Revival is seriously going to win the Andre the Giant Memorial? I don't, and neither should you. Then we had Sasha and Bailey. We had Sasha and Bailey versus Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville. Sasha looking as beautiful as always. Confronts Bailey, talking to the talking, and the, and Bailey explains why she's upset with Sasha. And it seems like they're going with Bailey as the heel here, and 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 I and I and. I, and and, and I like it. I like the fact they're going Bailey with as the heel, and they're keeping Sasha face. I've, I've always pitched the idea, of, of Bailey being the heel. And I, and I'm really liking it. I, I I really am liking it. I'm liking it so far. And I will continue to do so the more they keep this going. Mandy and Sonya win when Ma when Bailey goes for, uh, I guess you could call this an inside cradle, and then and then Bailey and Sasha get angry. Ba Bailey gets angry at Sasha, and. And then, uh, Sonya Sonya then knocks Bailey into Sasha, and then does a big kick right to the face, and and then pins Sasha, sorry, sorry, Bailey, sorry, pins Bailey for the win. John Cena cuts another promo. He demands an answer from The Undertaker. Kane then came out and gave him a vicious choke slam. Wow. They're really pushing the mo they're really pushing the motives on this one, are they? They're really pushing the motives on this one, are they? I don't get it. They're really pushing the motors to this. Kane then just destroys John Cena, all because he called The Undertaker a coward. I do like the storyline progression of Cena and Undertaker, but do you really need do you do do we really need Kane involved? Thought he was written off T I thought he was written off TV because of what happened with Braun Strowman. <sighs> Typical WWE. Typical. Can't keep, can't keep Kane off our TVs. And finally, guys, the Balor Club. Finn, Gallows, and Anderson defeated The Miz and The Miz Taraj. Nothing really special here. And then you had the final deletion. 
Not really much happened on Raw this week, you know. Not really much happened. Raw is, you know, I will give it. I will give Raw some credit. It did have some good moments with Brock and Roman and, and the final deletion and all, but ultimately, ultimately, I really didn't care much for this episode. You know, it, it just really didn't feel genuine. It didn't make me excited. So anyway, guys, that is my review of this episode of Monday Night Raw. Hope you all enjoyed it. Hit that like button. Comment your thoughts down below. And also, follow me on Twitter, at PValentine. Talk to you later.